This PC is what Ubisoft says are the minimum requirements to run Rainbow Six Siege. It's not pretty, in fact, it's not even from this decade. This is an i5-4690K, although technically that's actually an upgrade over the true minimum, an i5-4590, but with chips these old and frankly these terrible, who's counting? I have paired it with the appropriate GPU though, an RX 460. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. Let's take a look now that we have this system built and see how Rainbow Six Siege actually performs and, importantly, we'll then upgrade this system to the recommended specs to see what Ubisoft thinks you should be playing with. Let's get started, shall we? Now, obviously, with this being, you know, the minimum requirements, I'm running this at 1080p on low settings. It's really kind of as poor a visual quality as you can get, but it is at least playable. Running around just in the drone there, we're looking at 100 FPS, and running around as Sledge, we're also looking at 100 FPS. Although, Jesus, the visual quality on this is terrible. I am noticing that it's pretty stuttery, especially in fast movements. So even though it's technically running at, you know, 90, 100 FPS, it doesn't feel like 90 or 100 FPS. And considering this is a... Oh, there's someone behind me too. Uh, consider... Considering this is a 240 hz display, I think you would hope for a bit more performance than this. Let's not get blown up by CapCan. And there we go. Oh, hello CapCan. Anyone else? No. I'm stuck. Any more CapCan traps? No. Okay. I really hate these things. Go away. There we go. Anyone hiding in the toilet? Or the shower? There often is. Alright, let's just plant and see what happens, shall we? Let's plant a little bit hidden. Oh. Grenade? Yeah, grenade. Why not? <laughs> and band wave in the corner. Oh, I didn't realize there was only one left. So yeah, this is not exactly a smooth experience. It's definitely playable. Like, even though I'm playing with bots as well, which means that the CPU is working a bit harder than it normally would, because it has to control the bots, it's still pretty playable. It's laggy. It's not an enjoyable experience, but it's okay. It's passable, which I suppose for the minimum requirements, Makes a lot of sense. I did also run some benchmarks uh, using the in-game uh, canned benchmark, again on 1080p and low settings, and it got 102 FPS average, which honestly is about what I'm seeing while playing in-game, so not too bad. But, like I said, the, uh, the sort of stuttery nature makes it not feel like 100 FPS, although I am going to swap locations to the construction sites and to Thermite. You'll see why in a second. It is worth mentioning that low settings actually turns AMD FSR 2.0 on, um, and I believe sets a 50% render scale, which means that even though this is technically rendering at 1080p, it's not actually rendering at 1080p, it's rendering, rendering at 50% of that and then upscaling it, which does give you more performance than if you otherwise were just running it raw 1080p. But yeah, it looks pretty terrible. Um, luckily, you can still see your enemies and shoot them in the face. Well, now I've just got to wait for the smoke to disappear and then I can charge through and 50-50 chance of dying. No. Nope. Oh, that was a, a lot of hitching. <laughs> Let me start planting. There we go. All right, well, that's clearly just about playable, but let's upgrade the system and see how much more performance you get even on the same settings and I guess what sort of settings you might be able to run at. Um, let me do that upgrade for you now.
And there we have it, upgrade done. All I needed to do was swap out the RX 460 for an RX 560. Yeah, genuinely, Ubisoft recommends an RX 560 as the, the recommended graphics card to run this game. It's going to be interesting to see how much performance we actually get out of this because bearing in mind that the RX 560 is not a high-end card. It's also not even a modern card by today's standards and also to be clear I actually don't have a 560, I have an RX 470 which A has the same amount of VRAM at 4GB and B is actually a much much faster card so I'm really only giving it a fighting chance on the recommended settings here but um yeah, let's take a look. Uh, it's also worth remembering that the RX 460, 470, 560, those are all very much like low to at best case mid-range cards. The 480 and 580 and even the 590, which is just an overclocked 480, uh, or 580, which is just a rebranded 480. Anyway, those cards were all like at best mid-range contenders. They were like 10 to 60, 2060, 1660 Ti competitors, right? So, so to to uh, to realize that these are already very kind of mid to low end cards, and the fact that they're quite old now. Well, yeah, let's just see how what the performance looks like, shall we? Right, so we're now using the RX 470, still with a 4690K, 16 gigs of RAM, which is technically higher than uh, minimum as well, but it's what works in this machine. And, um, well, I'll be honest, it is an improvement. I, I cannot deny that there is more power on tap here. However, it's not exactly world's better, is it? Um, I would also mention that, uh, if you can see the screen, um, it is quite laggy, it's quite stuttery, it's quite, you know, you press something and then you get a result half a second later, which isn't the best playing experience, especially in, you know, what is essentially a, a fast-paced game like Siege. I mean, it's still easy enough to, you know, beat these, uh, these frankly terrible bots, but it's not a great experience. So it looks like we're getting anywhere between 150 and 170 FPS, at least looking at a wall. In fact, 185, just looking at a wall. Riveting, I know. But uh, it's also worth mentioning that, especially because the, the CPU here, the 4690K, is pretty slow. And if you want to find out more, check out the, uh, the video I did recently on the 10p versus 10 pound CPUs. Uh, but basically, even having things like present mon open to show you the performance is actively hurting the performance is likely what's causing a lot of the stuttering as well especially as it does its performance update intervals so it is worth noting that what you're seeing isn't technically what you'd feel but it's also still not an amazing experience any way you look at it some people are tripping my entry denial devices. Show me some body parts, there we go. Two in there. Where are the rest of them? Amazing. Okay, so the the good news is that I, when I ran the CAN benchmark, that was about 175 FPS with reasonably stable minimums, maximums, 1% lows. Um, and so generally speaking, without anything else running, it is a playable experience. And it's a hell of a lot better of an experience than with the 460 for sure. And I think with, you know, 170 FPS average, you could bump it up to medium settings and still get a pretty playable experience even with the recommended spec. But I also think that this should not be the recommended spec. At very least, we should have a higher end CPU to be able to not only play the game, but have like a single thing open in the background. Like I've turned everything that's in the background off to make sure that this is as close to a playable experience as possible. So that would definitely help. And I also think that something like even just an RTX 2060 as the, the, the recommended card, I think is a pretty reasonable choice. 
for CPUs we should have at least six cores, that is what the majority of gamers already have. And yeah, minimum four does still work, as you can see it is playable, but for recommended? I think it's time for Ubisoft to update those. But hey, those are my thoughts, I'd love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think about both the minimum and the recommended specs for running Siege? What uh, sort of specs are you running if you do play Siege, especially regularly, uh, and what sort of performance you're getting? Let me know in the comments down below. If you want to see more videos like this one, more of these sort of minimum requirements PCs, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments, hit the subscribe button, uh, and uh, obviously hit the like as well. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by just checking out plenty more videos, including the ones on the end cards. Uh, also check out the 10p versus £10 CPU uh, video, I'll leave that in the cards above or on the end cards as well. And uh, yeah, there's also a load of links in the description, including to my own hardware, the open source latency testing tool and open source response time tools, if you want to check those out too. Otherwise, that's kind of it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next one.